Hoss Hammond says, ask and you shall receive. That's because I said, give me some questions. Could you ask father, why is it that God loves some people more than others? And it what in, in what way does he love them? For his love is equal, for we all exist. But it would seem he gives more grace to say like our blessed mother than someone else. Mm. And that is indeed true, Thomas says. Aquinas, is it, you know, you read that in the Summa, whether God loves people more than others, and you expect him to be... <laughs> to be like a good American and like, say, he no, loves them all. He loves you equally. Yeah, exactly. But Aquinas is like, totes. So <laughs> why, why, what does it mean to say that God loves some more than others? That seems unfair. So for listeners at home, if you want to read this, I love this article. It's in the first part of the Summa, question 20, article 3, Devastation Station. Okay, so just prepare to have your mind blown or your face melted or whatever like rock analogy you want to employ. Um, so <laughs> First part? First part, question 20, I think article 3. I could right. be wrong, but I think that's it. Um, so what does St. Thomas say? Well, he says in God, so God's simple, right? So God isn't making like different discrete acts with respect to us. God is loving himself. And we are so many expressions of God's love, okay? Okay. So in that sense, God loves all the same because we are all so many expressions of God's love. Look at you. You got it right. Yeah, what's up? Yeah. Um, but he says God wills some greater graces than others. That is okay? what he says. Boom. <laughs> um, so we have, to, we have to say why? To what end? For what purpose? So here, St. Thomas brings it back to the fact of creation. What is creation for? It's not so that we will all be equal under the law, in the sight of God. It's for the manifestation of the glory of God, right? God didn't need to create. He didn't, right? He didn't like need man. We don't serve a purpose in the triune life that the other persons don't supply for, right? So we are a kind of overflow of God's love. We are God telling the secret of his love in time and space. Mm -hmm. And so it stands to reason then that our end, our goal is to return to God and to give glory to him in a way that only we can or each kind of unique thing can. So it would stand to reason, too, that, that variety is part of God's designs. Because God is simple, we said. So you can't, God can't speak his divine life in one created word. There's no one word that sums him up. He is inexhaustible. So he speaks many different words. So that by all of these wending ways, we could come to know more and more of his overabounding divine life. And so he makes some to be mothers and fathers, some to be consecrated religious, some to be priests, etc. So that you can see in these different dimensions, in the multifaceted ecclesial body, what it means to be the body of Christ, what it means to be God's own. And um, so to some, he gives greater grace because it shows his glory in a way unique to that creature. Mm -hmm. So like, for instance, start from the top. Jesus Christ is incarnate. So he took to himself a human nature. That grace we call the hypostatic union, not important to remember at this juncture, but just know that it's a grace. Greatest grace imaginable. St. Thomas says an infinite grace, a quasi-infinite grace. So there's no greater grace than that. And that's not something that like we get like jealous over. Like, well, why didn't he become incarnate? And, now that's just like an insane question. Yeah. So no one like begrudges that to the only begotten son of God. Ratchet it down. Blessed Virgin Mary, right? She's the mother of God. So her life is most closely associated with that of her son. So to be the mother of God, is a graced thing. Not only does it require grace for her mission, but it, it's a kind of icon of grace. So we should see what it looks like to draw close to the incarnate Lord, and we see that in the Virgin Mary. So she is given next greatest degree of grace. Um, and that's why we afford her a veneration higher than all the saints, mm. sometimes referred to as hyperdulia. What's up? <laughs> next, St. Joseph. Think about this, all right? Universal protector of Holy Church, most chaste spouse of the Virgin. Foster father of the incarnate of Lord. Terror of demons. My Party favorite. Yeah. yeah, you better believe it. Um, I was just praying that novena in anticipation of the feast. Cool. Fist bump. So St. Joseph also given an incredible degree of grace to equip him for his ministry, but also to show what it means to be in the God's family in a concrete way so as to kindle our desires for those things. Um, so yeah, and then you just go down the line. Think about the different saints. So like the good news is that God is giving you grace he is giving you as much grace as he wants in a certain sense. So how does this change our thinking about uh, the life of sanctification? Well, if you don't become the Blessed Mother, it's not because you're a failure. It's because God hasn't given you the grace to be the Blessed Mother. Hmm. He's giving you the grace to be Saint You, whatever, Saint Matt Fred, or Saint Father Gregory Pine, whatever. Um, but we are responsible for consenting to and cooperating with the graces that are actually given, not like... Um, like laboring under some nostalgia for the graces that could have been given or like lusting after future graces that might, might not be given. We are to respond to the graces that are actually given because in so doing, we say something of God that only we can. 
We show his variety. We show all of his divine attributes in a way particular to this vocation, to this time and place, to this setting in life. Um, so yeah, God does it because it makes his glory known, right? And because the purpose of you know, this life isn't to be equal, all to be the Blessed Mother, a kind of monochromatic mm-hmm. grace portraiture. It's could, to be saints. Could we read his respondio here in light of what you've just said, and then maybe you might want to comment on it. So Aquinas says, since to love a thing is to will it good, in a twofold way, anything may be loved more or less. In one way, on the part of the act of the will itself, which is more or less intense in this way, God does not love some things more than others because he loves all things by an act of the will that is one simple and always the same. That's an important distinction because I think the reason maybe that, you know, sounds weird in people's ears is they think, you know, God loves you, but he, whatever about me, that yeah. kind of thing. No, yeah. So that's, that's an important distinction. Yep. In another way, on the part of the good itself that a person wills for the beloved, in this way we are said to love that one more than another, for whom we will a greater good, though our will is not more intense. In this way we must needs say that God loves some things more than others, for since God's love is the cause of goodness in things, as has been said, no one thing would be better than another. Very good. Go. But things are better than another, clearly. The Blessed Mother versus me. Um, if God did not will greater goods for one than another. Yeah, that's great. It is great. Well done, Thomas. Hey, cheers. Yo, thanks for watching. You can watch the entire episode on YouTube if you want. You can listen to it at The Matt Frad Show by subscribing on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And feel free to support me, patreon.com slash mattfrad.